watching this planet out there, look what does it do? It looks at the sun and it sees how far away it is, and it decides to calculate on its internal adding machine the inverse of the square of the distance, and that tells it how much to move. This is certainly no explanation of the machinery of gravitation. So you might want to look further. Suppose that in the world, everywhere, there are flying through us at very high speed a lot of particles that come equally in all directions, they're just shooting by, shooting by, shooting by, and once in a while hit us in a bombardment. But we, are, we and the sun are practically transparent for them, nearly. But some hit, and so it's not completely transparent. And look what would happen. If the sun is here, and the earth is here, then if the sun weren't here, there would be particles bombarding from all sides, giving little impulses by the rattle of these bang, bang, the pewter hit, which would put, not shape the earth in any particular direction, because there is many coming from one side or the other, from top to bottom. However, when the sun is here, the particles which are coming in this direction are partly absorbed by the sun because some of them hit the sun and don't go through. Therefore, the number that are coming from this direction toward the earth is less than the number that are coming from the other side because here they have no opposition from no sun there. And it's easy to see after some mental effort that the further the sun is away, the less in proportion of all of the particles are being taken out of the possible directions in which particles can come. The solar size appears smaller. And in fact, inversely, is the square of the distance. So there will therefore be an impulse toward the sun on the Earth that's inversely is the square of the distance and is the result of large numbers of very simple operations, you know, just pit one after the other from all directions. And therefore, the strangeness of the mathematical relation will be very much reduced because the fundamental operation is much simpler than calculating the inverse of the square of the distance. This machine does the calculation. These particles bounce. Only trouble with it is that it doesn't work for other reasons. Every theory that you make up has to be again analyzed against all the possible consequences and to see if it predicts anything else. And this predicts something else. If the Earth is moving this way, more particles will hit it from the front than from the back. If you're running in the rain, more rain hits you from the, from the front of the face than in the back of the head, because you're running into the rain. And so as the Earth is moving in this direction, it's running into the particles, rather, and running away from the ones that are chasing it from behind, so that more particles hit it from the front than from the back, and there would be a force also sideways whenever there was any motion. This sideways force would slow the Earth up in the orbit, and certainly would not have lasted the at least three or four billion years that it has been going around the sun. So that's the end of that theory. Well, you say that was a good one, though. It got rid of the mathematics for a while. Maybe, maybe I can invent a better one. And maybe you can, because nobody knows the ultimate.